y'all. Let's open up the Holy Spirit. Let him do a makeover. Come on, say makeover. Let Holy Spirit do a makeover physically, mentally, emotionally, financially. Good morning to my Zoomers. God bless you, Dr. Skimmer. You're throwing stuff. I'm so happy. You're blowing up over there in the kingdom. <laughs> Going places, doing things. Your voice. Your voice. Amazing. The impact. Dr. Skimmer of your voice. Your influence. You haven't seen anything yet. The Lord says. You haven't seen anything yet. Come on in. God bless you. We open up, we open up, we open our marriages up to the Holy Spirit. We open up our thought life to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let us become. Whoa, we open up to you, Holy Spirit. Our plans, our desires, our ambitions, our hopes. Our wants, we open up to you, Holy Spirit, that you would guard and guide, that you would lead. Let us be God. More, bring people to us and remove people from us. That don't want to take the journey that will try to derail us that will get us distracted not that they're bad people it's just the right wrong season not that anybody is a bad person it's just not the right season for you and i to be distracted hallelujah yes we don't want to be distracted by bad theology we don't want to be distracted. We don't want to be derailed in this season. Holy Spirit, we open ourselves up to you. Make us aware. <laughs> Dr. Thea, Dr. Dr. Wilson, come on here. Pastor Linda, her prophet of God, let's go. Lynn Joseph, Evangelist Tish Walker, the gatherer. That's you, the gatherer. I was praying over you this morning. Holy Spirit said, that's you. Yeah, that's what I made us. The gathering. <laughs> the gathering. Wow. That's huge. That's how you're known in heaven. Tish, that's what they call you in heaven. The gathering. <laughs> I heard it so loud. I'm like, wow. That's what they call you. The host of heaven. So wherever you go any place, the way it's made, because that's what they call you, the gatherer. There she goes, the gatherer. And they command things to come to you. It's not just people. It's not just people. It's not just people. Don't limit yourself to people. You are the gatherer. The Holy Spirit says, as I was praying over you this morning, go, stop Say that's what she's known as in heaven is the gathering. It's not just people, it's the gathering of resources, it's the gathering of, of access, access, and accessibility. Don't limit yourself to people. God said, I call you the gatherer. I call her the gatherer. She is the gatherer. So I don't know. I don't know. You know, it's kept like when a baby is um you know baby they, they just bring everything to you they bring toys <laughs> they bring shoes they bring socks you know they bring books they bring cereal they just gather they gather they gather they you know they don't have any prejudice about what they gather because everything is of value to them everything and god says that you find value in everything that you bring to you I was praying on your heart this morning. How the little shines. And she's known as the gatherer. Don't limit yourself to just people. No, said the gatherer. The gatherer. The gatherer. 
say I send things around you to help you gather. It's kind of like a magnet, like 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 things just you know come come just come people information. God said information gather gather. So don't limit your your grace to just people. Understand what's happening in the unseen. Understand what's happening for you in the unseen that you can't see that's not manifested yet. Gather, gather, and it's 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 just the grace. It's grace. It's grace. Oh God, yes, Sheka, come on, Yosha, rest, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. God says He's expanding us in this season, folks. He's expanding us in this season. Let us be come. Evangelist the Kiva Grashes. God bless you. Jonathan Bowen. Camilla Cook. God bless you. Chevelle Beasley. Eric Manor. Good morning. Bless your son. Pastor Rita Bill. Janet Rivers Richardson. Hey, sis. God bless you. Dr. Kadisha. God bless you. Jolene Woods. Elder Carmelita Chestnut. God said, I'm expanding you in this season. And it's going to be a stretch, Dr. Watson. It's going to be a stretch. That is, it's going to be a stretch. Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. See, I'm, I'm expanding you. Listen, some of you have allowed yourselves to be small. And, and, and this is what I heard the Holy Spirit say. It, it, it's, it sufficed for a season. The small, some of you have, have become limited uh just because of what <laughs> you you feel associated with i was praying over dr thea uh yesterday and this morning and many of you he said i'm expanding you i'm expanding you you know holy spirit just has no boundaries has no limits holy spirit has no limits has no boundaries prophet tawana bowens god is expanding and, and it's expanding, Pastor John Davis. God is expanding, Jerling Woods. Holy Spirit, God said, but it will be a stretch. And you're going to fight it. Oh, listen, you're going to fight it. 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 Because it's going to feel like, it's going to feel like you don't belong or you don't have interest. He was talking to me about me. <laughs> hey, Dr. Thea, I was praying for you and God was talking to me about me. And so I'm put what he said to me about you. <laughs> hey, glory to God. That I'm on shot. Yes, God. Yes, God. And 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 the first, your first thing is uh to resist it. Because, you know, how we identify, you know, this this last um what seven six seven years or so they want you to identify as hers or she or something like that yeah help me so 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 sociology sociology anthropology all of this stuff in the culture <laughs> i'm praying over you and god starts making it he said listen Pronouns. Thank you, Dr. Shazetta. You know, you out in that space. And I was like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> they they said that him, he, him, him, them, they, her, she. And I don't know why God brought that to me this morning. <laughs> and he said, why, why do my people think so small of themselves? Why do you think so? And then why do you follow every every trend? Why do you follow? We, we really don't. We really don't value the influence of the Holy Spirit on our lives. And I remember, <laughs> hey, soldier, Shell, come on, IG, I see you. Thank you. Charlotte is in the house. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kai Kai. He said, why do you limit yourself to that? Why do you fall for every trend? Hey, Elder Sherry Henderson, you must have felt me this morning. <laughs> Dr. Noreen, 
Woo, talk about expansion. Good God Almighty. That's 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 what God is doing with you, God, Dr. Dr. Noreen. All of us. He's, he said, I he said, why do you limit? Why do we fall for them? So I remember when I was uh elected to the board. So this is year seven for me. This is my second term coming up to year eight. So this is the ending of six going into seven. And then of course, 2026, um, my, this term ends and the Lord has already spoke to me and said, and you will run another term. Tish, Lord Jesus, <laughs> you will give him one more term. And um, yeah, that stuff ain't for me. And so I remember Ava. Okay. I will baby. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, them, they, there, and she, he, her, and us, and all that. So they sent this email. Uh, one of our board members sent this email to us and said, you know, that we needed to add this to our, our cards. And this was the trend and the millennials and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know, I do not know. No. No, I'm not doing that. So uh, when when it came, it said one more turn. <laughs> Woo! One more, one more. That's that's another four more years, Lord Jesus. And uh, we have to address our enrollees who wish to be identified as non-binary. And where's that in school in your classes? She, her, him, they, them. Really. Wow, come on. And this is why some stuff got to change. This is why some things are going to change at the White House level. This is why some things are going to change uh, in, in our government because we don't have no guardrails. We don't have any guardrails. Why do we follow these trends? I don't even know where it came from when we have Holy Spirit. Wow, Dr. Aqua, I love you so much, girl. Why do we follow? Too much dose, my sister. No, I'm not doing that. I'm not putting that on my card. She heard. I've been, I've been Corletta, J. Lewis, Harris Vaughn. Oh, I've been that all my life. I don't need this. I'm not doing it. And I didn't even understand it, Neil. Business context of pronoun refers to word in place of someone's name. Wow. Why? 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 Such as he, they is considered an important aspect of creating an inclusive workplace by using the correct pronoun for each individual. And essentially, it's a way to refer to someone without repeatedly saying no. That means I'm anonymous. That means that I'm only known by my pronoun. See, we don't even realize when the enemy is trying to take away our agency. We don't even realize that. We don't even realize when, when the culture is going after what God gave you, which is agency, which is identity. So let's just call you by your pronoun. Thank you, Neil. You always provide resources and reference and context for me. I love, I love this class. <laughs> Y'all so smart. No, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want you to call me, hey, she, hey, no, Bishop Carletta J. Vaughn. That's my name. Or you call me Dr. Vaughn. Or you can say just Vaughn. You can say whatever, but no. But that's a way for us to, to we come under the influence of this. We come under the influence of this. And I, I really want to dig into this Ephesians uh, passage. I really want to, to dig into this Ephesians 5 passage. If you have your paper Bibles, I really want to dig into this because I, I think we, we've missed something uh, significant in our trying to identify Ephesians 5 uh, and 18. Paul is making a contrast, not necessarily a comparison between wine and the Holy Spirit. Wine controls a person completely and can work evil in the heart and in the life. Holy Spirit also controls completely. 
but Holy Spirit empowers us to righteousness. Holy Spirit's influence provides divine fuel for a different, free, and uninhibited life lived for God's glory. We cannot begin to imagine the thinking and the thoughts that we would have differently if everything in our lives was under the influence, especially in the times of disruption. That's, that's, that's Holy Spirit speaking to us. I, I was reading this a text, uh, just kind of came to me from uh, the Exodus text, where Moses says, uh, now I pray in verse 13 of 33, if I have found grace uh, in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. And he said, uh, 14, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Wow, wow. And I, I, was, I was just having that moment as we were singing our worship song, our opening number. Let me become more aware of your presence. Let me experience the glory of your goodness. How do you handle when we say we want your presence? We want your presence. We want your presence. I, I want you to think about this. What, what would happen if in the same way you said, God, I want your presence. Your presence, of course, we know now is the Holy Spirit. But we also said, I want your influence. I want your influence over my life. Paul says in Ephesians 5 and 18, God says to Moses in Exodus 33, my presence will go with you. My presence my presence. Now, the difference between us and Moses, of course, is that the presence of God went with him. And the presence of God for us is in us. Holy Spirit lives in us. Holy Spirit lives in us. Holy Spirit lives in us. Listen, listen to this text. This is, this is a powerful, powerful text. Uh, Ephesians chapter number five. At verse 18, let's get that in, in the text itself, Ephesians 5 <clears throat> and 18. And let's, let's, let's start at Ephesians 4 and let's kind of read down. Uh, let no corrupt word, let's, let's start with 40 or 29, 28. Let him who stole steal no more. Verse 29. I'm in Ephesians 4. 29. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Only what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ has forgiven you. Be imitators of God as dear children. Walk in love as Christ has also loved us and given himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God as a sweet-smelling aroma fornication and all uncleanness and covetousness, let it not even be named among you. As is fitting for the saints, neither any foolish talking. <laughs> My mother used to say, shut up all that foolish talking. Nor of course jesting, which is not fitting, but rather the giving of thanks. For you know that no fornicator or unclean person, nor covetous man, 
who is an idolater has an inheritance in the kingdom of God. Wow. I know we forget that. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once in darkness, but now you are the light in the Lord. So walk as children of the light. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wendy put it up. Let's see. Did you used to make ends meet by stealing? Well, no more. Get an honest job so that you can't help. You can help others who can't work. Watch the way you talk. Let nothing foul or dirty come out of your mouth. Say only what helps. Well, well that 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 is something. <laughs> wow, wow. Jerlene said a few years ago, my fourth grade son came home saying his teacher wanted to know what pro pronoun he wanted to identify as. Wow. What city and state are you in, Jerlene? Asked the class about being pansexual. I had to look up what it was. I know you did. I still don't know. I had to, when I complained, the response was as if I was the problem, like it or leave it. Oh, this is a private school in Addison, Texas. Wow. They also started making all the bathrooms unisex. Took homecoming king and queen away saying they don't want to offend the boys if he wants to be a queen or girls if she, if she wants to be a king. I sure hope you took your son out of that school. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's weird. That's, that's out there. That's really out there. Wow. Wow. Pansexual is a sexual orientation that describes someone who is attracted to people of all genders. Wow. Fluid. Oh, got it, Rhonda. Wow. Wow. I know you took your baby up out of that space immediately. Wow. And that's 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 what's going. That's what's happening in in the world, because the influence, the the influence of the culture. Remember, I told you three things: culture, climate, and church. Wherever the culture, the climate, and the church, that's where you can. Those are the three pillars of of the world right now: the culture, the climate, and the church. <laughs> All of this started in psychology and sociology. Wow, Doctor Hope. Wow. All of it started in the very bowels of hell. This is what's going on in hell. Just take away, take away their, their, take away their agency, take away their identity with Christ. Watch this. Let's let's keep reading here. I'm in Ephesians 5. It said, walk as children of the light. Verse 8, for the fruit of the spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Wow. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. Verse 15, see to it that you walk circumspect, not as fools, but wise, redeeming the time. Because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, which is in dissipation. Let's see what the passion is saying. Be not drunk with wine. Be not drunk with wine. Ephesians 5 and 18. Ephesians 5 and 18. Wow. And don't get drunk with wine, which is rebellion. Instead, be filled continually with the Holy Spirit. And your hearts will overflow with a joyful song to the Lord. Keep speaking to each other with words of scripture, singing the songs and the praises, and spontaneous songs by the Spirit. Wow. And always give thanks to the Father for every person that he brings into your life in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That 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 verse has has arrested me. That 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 verse has arrested me. 
that verse has arrested me in the sense that um, this this is this is I believe a time we need to revisit this. Don't drink too much wine that cheapens your life. Drink the Spirit of God. Wow, that's the message. Don't drink too much wine that cheapens your life. Um, that's Ephesians five eighteen. Wendy, wow. That cheapens your life. Drink the spirit of God. Huge draughts of him. Wow. Sing hymns instead of drinking songs. <laughs> Sing praises over everything. Sing songs from your heart to Christ. I love that text. I love that. I love it. Cheapens your life. Come on, Tammy. It cheapens your life. Drink the spirit of God. Wow, drink the spirit of God. I, I get it. I get it. I get it. I I'm a huge wine maker lover. And um we grew up, my mom would make homemade wine. And it was the best wine. Every Thanksgiving, she would bring out her new wine, watermelon wine, grape wine, apricot, peach. So every Thanksgiving, this was her season of introducing her new wine. And uh, this year, when we went in our fast in January, uh, the spirit of the Lord, you know, told us, of course, no alcoholic beverages, no, you know, we, we, we took out a lot of stuff for the fast. And then Holy Spirit um, said to me, after the 21 days, he said, you stay on another 21 days. And I was like, okay. And then after those 21 days, the Spirit of the Lord said, stay another 21 days. And I was like, okay. So then by the time the third, the third uh, 21 days occurred, we were now at Pentecost. And so I'm doing another like 21 days. And so after Pentecost Sunday, I remember going home. Uh, back to the house after, because you know we do, we do, we did a Pentecost weekend, uh, which I think was amazing, and we would probably do that again. And as we were um, ending that, and you know, I'm thinking, okay, this is the end. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, "What will you render? What will you give up? What will you render?" And I said, "What will I render? Yes, what will you give me this year as a consecration?" And I was impressed immediately that it was meat and that it was wine and sugar. Those three things, meat, wine, and sugar. And so this year, that has been my consecration to the Lord, was meat, wine, and sugar. And... Um, what I'm really amazed at is how my body is shedding weight. Um, many of you know that I've been, you know, fighting weight, you know, continually and fighting and winning, fighting and then losing, fighting and winning. Uh, but it's been amazing to me the, the way that my body has just sh shredded. It's just been shredding the fat, the shredding shedding and shredding fat and i gave up meat i gave up wine and sugar and i will admit that uh on sundays i will allow myself a little sweet a little treat and um meat and and sugar so i said what why 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 you know and i remember i had a beautiful a bottle of wine that was in the refrigerator i just you know, purchased it and had not opened it because of the consecration. And of course, I'm going to reward myself with this beautiful, expensive glass of wine. And I remember going um, home from Pentecost and the Spirit was speaking to me and saying, what will you render to me? What will you render to me? And I said, what do you mean, Lord? They said, what will you render the rest of the year? What will, what will you render? So basically for the first four months, I was fasting. He said, what will you render? What will you give me as a consecration? What will you submit to me as a sacrifice? 
And so I was very clear that the fasting that we were on, that I was to continue that. So the meat, meat, the wine, and the sugar. Those were the three things that I gave up in the fast. And so I was very impressed uh, with the Spirit of the Lord that I was to let all of it go. Meat, wine, and sugar. And that this was my consecration for 2024. And I remember coming back home and, you know, thinking, oh, man. And um, the meat wasn't as hard because we had done Daniel fasting. And I'm not a big, big, big meat eater anyway. And um, the sugar was tough, tough because that's more addictive than anything. And the wine wasn't hard, but it was, it hurt my heart because it it's, it's just something that my family, we just grew up with um, affection. And, and when I get real, real old, I want a vineyard. I want to, I want to plant grapes and fruit. I want a vineyard. I want to have a private uh, label, sanctified wine. And the Spirit of the Lord said, just can you give it up for a year? Can you let can you let this be your consecration? What will you render to me? And um the weight just to want to just just shredding, just I'm just literally shredding off. And I asked Holy Spirit, I said, What 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 were what are you working on? What are you after? And this is the scripture he gave me, Ephesians 5, 18, that instead of drinking wine, drink me. Wow. <laughs> instead of drinking wine, this is your consecration for the year. Drink me. Drink me. Drink me. So then, of course, I began to, you know, say, okay, um, you know, what what else is it that you are working on, you know, because uh, I'm 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 a I'm old I'm an old positive blood type, so certain things my body you know wants. Glenn, I see you, and the Lord said, but will you give it up for me? Will you give it up for me? <laughs> and and uh, my stuff just you know just shredding and literally. That's what it, that's all it is. And uh, he said, I'm after, I'm after. I said, what are you after? Holy Spirit, what are you after? He said, influence. I want, I want your, your life to be completely influenced by me. And I was like, wow, okay. And so uh, periodically, I'll ask Holy Spirit if it's a fish or something like that, can I have it? But I've really just made my life a lot of veggies and mushrooms and and just enjoy myself. I've added, you know, some lean pastas and, you know, I love soups now and beans and, you know, things like that. And uh, my, my, um, <laughs> Pastor Lamont, my, um, my appetite has shifted and changed, you know, um, I, you know, I, I, I recognize that there were other things influencing me. I recognize that. So what does it mean to us when the scriptures say, drink the spirit of God? Drink the spirit of God. So uh, we're, we're, we're learning something in our ministers in training class about addictions, about addictions and, and, and what that, what that means in terms of um, what is, what does, what does an addiction mean? And we're, we're learning that the addiction, the person, the addict, the person that has an addiction, alcohol, drugs, whatever, marijuana, all of these things, they influence the brain. That, that it takes over the brain. 
Now, now I'm I'm a nurse. I'm a registered nurse. Well, I'm, I'm a nurse. Uh, my profession, my degree is in nursing. I have a degree in nursing, and my first career was as an RN. Uh, started out as an LPN, started out as a medical assistant, then went to LPN school, MDTA, and then went to school Wayne County Community College, and um, and and that's where I started in nursing, real you know, as a profession. And did a lot of studying about, you know, the brain and how the brain, you know, governs our lives. It's the control center of our lives, but never thought about how an addict, because we as church people, we address everything as a demon. And there are spirits underneath the addiction that you still have to get to. But the drug, the substance, the wine, the alcohol, the food, the sugar, that all of these things, that they impact our brain. And it causes an influence. It, uh, it influences us. H have you ever um, um, seen how an alcoholic has no inhibition? has no inhibitions. Have you ever seen, have you noticed that, that the alcohol overrides, the alcohol overrides their own conscience, their own volition, their will, that the alcohol overrides that. Wow, Shell, wow, wow. And that, that um, how, the, the the addiction influences the brain. And that's why many times they go and come and up and down and back and forth and they have to go to treatment and they have to go to uh, uh, meetings and they have to do a lot of things because this drug has created pathways in the brain. Woo! Wow, you, you all have to you you all have to hear this. And we I never knew the impact that drugs and alcohol. So that repeated exposure to any addictive substance causes the nerve cells in the nucleus acubens and prefrontal cortex of the brain, you got to hear this, that, that basically what it does is it hijacks the brain. Walk with me, lean into me. If you, if you know of anyone that is dealing with addictions, it can be sex, it can be sex, sexual addictions. It, 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 it can be food. Listen, whoo, whoo, whoo. Wow, 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 that the external stimuli of the substance, it hijacks the brain. It can be the same for food. It can, it, it, the, 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 the theory about addictions, and I'm reading this from our book um, from Apostle Pamela Morgan. Uh, the theory about addiction is the dopamine interacts with another neurotransmitter, glutamate, to take over the brain's system of reward-related learning. And so this system has an important role in sustaining life because it links activities needed for survival such as eating, drinking, and sex with pleasure and reward. So repeated exposure to an addictive substance and or behavior causes the nerve cells in the nucleus, acubens, and the prefrontal cortex. This is the area of the brain that is involved in planning and executing tasks to communicate in a way that makes us want something or drives us to go after it.
Wow. And so many times when I've seen ministry, um, when people say, I rebuke you, you spirit of heroin. I rebuke you, you spirit of cocaine. I rebuke you. No, 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 no. You, that, that's the wrong. You need to be trained in deliverance. That's not a spirit. And when a person overcomes the addiction, listen to me, it is because that thing, that substance, that appetite no longer influences the brain. So the way that they make their decisions, the way that they live, the way they talk, the way they show up is no longer under the influence. And what God actually does is heals the brain. That the brain has to go through healing. Some people are addicted to drama. Some people are addicted that you crave it. You crave it. You crave disagreement. You crave argument. You crave that. Same thing with homosexuality and other things in which, in which you uh, crave that particular appetite. You have that appetite. Where man loves a man and a woman loves a woman. That that's a that 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 is that that experience of pleasure prompts you to seek it, and it influences your choice. It influences your decisions on who you lie with, who you lust after, who you run after. And dopamine, which is the part of us that in the brain that contributes to that experience of pleasure. Wow. So, so this, this brain of ours, this, this brain of ours, some people are pornography, uh, perversion, pedophilia, uh, bestiality, all of these weird kinds of appetites. You say, what in the world? What in the world happened? <laughs> I will, Travis. I will indeed. If the apostle is on, I'm going to let her post her, the name of her book. Uh, LaShawn, if you have it, post it. So addictive drugs provide a shortcut to the brain's reward system by flooding the nucleus occupants with dopamine, the hippocampus lays down memories of this rapid sense of satisfaction. And the amygdala, which is the, the part of the brain, right, right here, right, right in this area, creates a conditioned response to certain stimuli. Wow, that's exactly right, man. Drug addiction is not a spirit. Drug addiction is not a spirit. That's what I said. She said, is that what I heard you? That's exactly right. It's not a spirit. It is a disease. It is a disease. And the area of your life that it impacts is your brain. It's a disease of the brain. Now, what's under that? No, no, Thea, that's, that's, that works only for a few people. That cold turkey only works for a few people because it doesn't heal the brain. So you gotta realize, and this is what we have to teach, about addictions. We have to understand that drug addiction is not a spirit. It is a disease. It is a disease of the brain. Any kind of addiction is because of what it does to your brain, how it alters your choices, how it alters your, your, your stimuli, what your sensors. 
Wow. I need you to understand that. And a lot of us have not. It's called toxic relationships. Another addiction by Apostle Pamela Morgan. Toxic addictions, toxic relationships. Another addiction by Pamela Morgan. We're putting the ISBN 978-0977-011407. It's going to be right. It's a disease. Thank you, Apostle Morgan. Toxic relationships. That this, this, this impact on the brain. Why? Because now once the brain comes under the, that is addicted to the stimuli, it's addicted to the feelings of pleasure and the feelings of acceptance and affirmation. And so people can go to treatment many, many times in and out. Now, there are some people, by the grace of God, that God delivers. That's a miracle. And what happens in that, now that I understand, and I'm a nurse by profession, but now that I understand is that when people get delivered instantly, that there was a miracle of the brain. It was a miracle of the brain. So heroin is not a demon. So cocaine is not a demon. Um, so... Um, uh, uh, marijuana is not a demon. These are substances, the same as sugar, the same as alcohol. These are substances that we come under the influence of. Now, what makes us come under the influence of something like this? That's where we start getting into deliverance. That's when we have to begin to deal with rejection, that's where we have to begin to deal with those that those are spirits. We have to deal with the spirit of fear. We have to deal with those spirits that have created, if you will, a person to position them to become subject to an addiction. There are thousands of people that that drink alcohol and don't become alcoholics. There are millions of people that smoke, you know, smoke marijuana every now and then, or do different things, and they don't become addicts. But there is already something underneath that. So let's deal with homosexuality. Let's deal with some of these other things that influence us. Let's deal with drama, trauma. That influences us. What set you up for that? What, what allowed you to be set up for that? Let me put this up, Morgan. They're, they're asking for your book. So let me let me put this up because I believe that we need resources uh, for the toxic relationships. Toxic relationships. Just some people are addicted. Some people are addicted to toxic relationships. Drugs is just the surface. Yes, Lady Spencer, we still got to get to the root. While the brain is healing, while the brain is healing from the addiction, from the substance, from the outside stimuli. Now we got to get, this is where the deliverance team comes in. And this is where now we have to begin to deal with What's underneath? What set you up? So those of you on Zoom, the name of the book is Toxic Relationships, Another Addiction by Pamela Morgan. You can go to, you can go, uh, to uh, Amazon and get this book and get it. It will help you. It will help you. It has helped us. And so while this while we're dealing with the disease portion of the addiction, now the deliverance team, now we have to go in and deal with rebellion. That's a demon. Rejection. That's a demon. We have to deal, we have to deal with resentment, unforgiveness. We have to deal with offense. See, 
those are those those are the demonic spirits those are the spirits that set you up for the addictive process to take root wow so we have to be very very we, we have to be trained we have to be we have to be trained Ooh, Russia, is it love or are you just thirsty? <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Patricia James. And uh, there is a link here over here in Facebook for you all to get that. And I strongly urge you, uh, if you would like to reach out to her, you can email apostle at keyinsighttraining at gmail.com. You can e email her at keyinsight training as k-e-y insights training at gmail.com and so th these listen so the word pharmaceutical or pharmacy is dealing with drugs drugs uh, and so we have to be we have to know uh what it is wow wow So Felicia says, this is so good. How do you uh, de heal it, Bishop? I so understand what you're saying. I have a son that's addicted to alcohol, had a car accident and left him with TBI. Doctors want him to go to AAA, but he won't go. Wow. Well, you're going to have to uh, get him into treatment. He's got to get into treatment. And then he needs to get to the altar. So you're dealing with two things. You're dealing with the alcohol, but you're also dealing with something underneath that that makes him want the alcohol. And the alcohol gives him the relief or gives him some pain um, that medicates whatever the pain, whether it's emotional pain, physical pain. So the alcohol, the, the addiction is tied to something deeper than the actual stimuli. Now, now, what I've what I've just done is give us an, a a bigger understanding, a bigger understanding, because we think everything is a spirit, and we think everything is a demon. Everything is not a demon. Everything is not a demon. We got to get to the root of what is causing this. Even toxic relationships, you know, what what makes you crave something? You have to get underneath that. Now. Let's listen to this. Listen to this. Paul says, I want you to trade out what stimulates you. I want you to exchange that for the Holy Spirit. I want, I want you to exchange that instead of being drunk on wine instead of see because what this does is that it causes your cognitive thinking thank you shana you you can't discern right from wrong you can't you don't know when you're off the rails you don't know when you're out of out of out of bounds you you don't know a drunk person don't know that they urinated on themselves a drunk person a person that is is high is nodding in church they 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 have lost all cognition of shame. They've lost all, all discernment. All of this is gone. So they're nodding, you know, they're, they're shooting up. They have no, they have no ability to discern how much dope they should take or how much they should. They don't have any ability. They've lost all of that. This stuff, whatever it is, alcohol whatever it is toxic relationships you you don't have any guardrails anymore you have come under the influence of toxicity you have come under the influence of a perversion of a, of an appetite you've come under the you can't control it you can't control it you can't control and, and, and so what you begin to do is try to make it right because you can't control it so something must be wrong with me 
then, 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 then if I can't control this, if it keeps coming back, if it's something that I still crave, if it's something that I still want, I mean, you know, I've heard people say, well, if God wants me to, to stop it, he would take it from me. No, 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 that, no, that is your way of modifying your addiction. You want your addiction now to, to usurp the will of God for your life. It alters your brain. It alters the way we think. It alters the way we see a person. It alters everything. And without treatment, it's just like cancer. You know, when, when, when you pray for something, I was talking to our team the other day. The young man said, you know, my son, it throws him in the water, it throws him in the, in the, in, it throws it in the fire, it throws him in the water, it throws it. You know, and and he was like, what? You know, so he had epilepsy. But epilepsy is a disease of the brain. And Jesus said, you deaf and dumb spirit. Wow, that, that's serious. So I teach deliverance. So we have to have better teaching because we don't know what people are under the influence of. We don't word curses, word curses. People, some people are under word curses. Woo, Diane Blake, thank you all for those of you that chime in and say, I, I've been, I've been delivered. Woo, Rashi Kaba, thank you all, thank you. Woo, I'm trying, this is apostolic intelligence. Now, after they go through treatment, yes, Alicia, now the renewing of the mind. Now the mind has to be renewed. First the brain, then the mind. Remember that the brain and the mind, two different and distinct entities of your person. The brain is a physical organ. The mind is, which is controlled by, by the brain, now has to learn new things and has to begin to put in place of those word curses, of those, those incidents, those things that cause them to be set up as addicts. Now we have to put the word of God in there. The, while the brain is healing, the brain has to heal. Now we begin to get you in the word of God. We begin to get the word of God in you. We begin to get you filled with the spirit of God. So now you come under the influence of Holy Spirit. Wow, wow, wow. Are, are you hearing this? Some people are, are, are not. It's not just a devil, folks. So Paul says something very clear that I think we have missed. We have missed. Oh, come on, Travis. I'm glad you're here. No, no, no. I'm glad you're here. Reach out to Apostle Morgan. Reach out to us. Learning how outside stimuli can affect us, how it impacts our body, it impacts our choices, it impacts our brains, it impacts our decisions, it impacts our behavior. Oh, Russia, listen to this, listen to this. Sugar is just as powerful as crack, just as powerful. Just as powerful, just as powerful. That that, woo, that sugar. Woo, woo, woo. Woo. Wow, wow, wow. Listen to me carefully. And it cheapens your life. Don't drink too wine. It cheapens your life. Listen to what this says. It says, now drink Holy Spirit. <laughs> Let me see if I can go back and find the text. Uh, uh, <laughs> drink Holy Spirit. What What is he saying? Drink Holy Spirit. Oh, Sherry, Cheryl Robinson, thank you. Listen. Whoa, God, my sister said you, you're shrinking. Listen, I'm telling you. 
Listen to this. Dr. Shizetta says, I have applied this to even other types of things that I'm consuming, conversations, media, etc. If we overconsume on these things in this season, we will leave very little room for what Holy Spirit is saying. And we will miss the mark every time. Woo, Angie B. <laughs> It's, it's, it's what influences you. It's what it, who influences you. What influences you? Don't drink too much wine that cheapens your life. But listen to this. Drink the spirit of God. Drink the spirit of God. And instead of singing those beer songs, those drinking songs, drink, sing songs of the spirit. What influences us, Monica Johnson? What influences us, Tiffany? What influences us? To, don't drink too much wine. It cheapens your life. But be influenced. Come under the influence of Holy Spirit. Come under the influence of Holy Spirit. When you see a person that's under the influence of alcohols and drugs, they don't care where they sleep. They don't care who they sleep with. They don't care what they eat. You listen. You know it's something. When you can eat food out of a garbage receptacle. When you can eat food out of a garbage can. When you are digging into the garbage to eat food, how much has that person yielded to the influence of that addiction, to the influence of that stimuli? When you can see them laying in the street and don't care. They, they have lost all boundaries, all of the guardrails are gone. This influence over their life is so powerful nothing else matters the family don't matter some of them have wives or husbands don't matter they have children it doesn't matter and you say oh my god listen sister Dilworth said i just witnessed this the other day a person eating out yes and, and 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 panhandling and ma'am ma'am sir sir would you give me 20 and they don't care nothing about what kind of life they live and what kind of stuff that they do that that causes them to uh to to turn tricks just to get the money to get the drugs no more self-respect no self-control no boundaries Eating garbage. What food you throw away, they eat it because they use their money for dope. What's influencing you? Ministry can be a drug. I've watched so many people under the influence of ministry. It's not the Holy Spirit. But under the ministry, under the they're addicted to ministry. They have an addiction to they associate ministry with success. Some people, church is an addiction. You go to church, you go to church, 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 but nothing in your life. Some of you go to church just so you don't fail. If I stay in church, and some people like hard church. They want mean church. They want church that puts all kinds of restrictions on them because that's the way that they feel about themselves. And if it's too easy, I may slip back into my former life. Wow. Folks, we got to be very careful. We got to be very, very careful about what influences us. Especially in times of disruption when we're open. Especially in times of disruption when we are vulnerable, when we are hurting, or when we are disappointed, 
especially in in times when you know you are going through seasons of grief and sorrow you're going through seasons you know in our culture everything is topsy-turvy everything is upside down who influences you what influences your appetite wow see i saw a woman sitting on the curb on a ramp to the highway the other day she's just out of it and had no clue the danger she was in no clue because the influence what she was under the influence of narisa what she was under the influence of took away her fear of death and took away her need for caution totally under the influence Wow. And when you when you have given yourself over to a stimuli or you've given yourself over to a passion or to an appetite. When you have given yourself over to something that stimulates you, that turns you on, that affirms you, that gives you feelings of love and affirmation or that takes away the pain of life. The stuff you should confront, but you don't have the gall to confront it. You don't have the nerve to confront it, so you medicate it. Lisa says, so how do we lose self-control? I, I don't really understand. How do we lose self-control? I don't know if you lose it. I think you give it away. You give it away to whatever influences you. You give it away. Some of you have an addiction to, 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 to work. You workaholics, and you call yourself, I'm a workaholic. You gave yourself, that influences you. You gave yourself over to that. You give it over, and when you begin to give yourself over to these external stimuli, and it now forms an addiction, you got both a spiritual and a physical problem. Because your physical problem is now that your brain is being marked in a way that will keep you in that loop. But you now also have a spiritual problem because you have not yielded to the influence of the Holy Spirit and something else is driving you. So it's both. It's both and. Under the influence. Are you under the influence? Holy Spirit? Or are you under the influence of anything else? What else influences your choices, your decisions? Give yourself unknowingly over to these things. You, It baits you in. You say, oh, I can control it. It baits you. Let me tell you, when Holy Spirit said to me, I want influence. I want, what will you give me? What will you give me? What will you give me this year? I said, wow. And I remember this is my own testimony. This beautiful bottle of expensive wine that I purchased, Lisa, that I purchased, I told. And you know, praise God. I, 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 you all know I don't I don't hide nothing from you. Because I can't hide it from him. I'm not gonna hide it from you. And me wasn't hard, but that sugar. Oh, I can remember just buying Kit Kats and buying, you know, Reese's peanut butter cups. And, you know, now I can walk past and I'm like, okay, whatever. It had, it was influenced. It was becoming an addiction if it already was not. And I remember taking that beautiful, expensive bottle of wine and pouring it out in that sink. I nearly died. The tears. Oh my God. The money. I'm thinking how much I paid for it, but it wasn't that. That was the cover up. It was way too important to me. It was way too important to me. It meant way too much to me. And Holy Spirit said, I don't want anything else to have that kind of influence over you, but me. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. Oh my God. 
Come on, Glenda. She says, as a former crack addict, every time I hit the pipe, it was good. Never chased the high for something higher. Wow. It was a high that was good every time until I overdosed on it. It almost gave me a heart attack. And that's when my conversion took place. Glory to God. Ooh, shut up. Hallelujah. God is speaking to us. Paul said, don't be drunk on wine. Be drunk on the Holy Spirit. Let Holy Spirit influence you. Influence your conversations, your behavior. Let Holy Spirit dictate to you your response to that person that threw shade at you. Let Holy Spirit dictate that lust when you see something that attracts you and you want it. Whether it's spending Shopping, eating, sexing, texting, whatever it is. Nothing in our life should have more influence over us than the Holy Spirit. I got to go. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Roshaya. My God, my God, my God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me become more aware of your presence. Let me experience the glory of your goodness. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> Think about it. What influences me? What stimuli have I allowed to replace the Holy Spirit? I gotta go. <laughs> Woo! Glory.